Hello there, my fellow Holotable heroes, and welcome to another Swaga video. So it's Monday, which means yet another Mandalorian Galactic Challenge for us today. However, unlike the other Mandalorian challenges we had in the month of February, this one actually has a feat where you need to use four Mandalorians to get uh, max rewards, not five, and that allows uh, players like me that's got low gear Mandalorians, don't have best commander to actually get max rewards finally for a Mandalorian challenge. So in this video first I'll talk through uh, the modifiers uh, that we need to look for uh, in this event. I'll show you the mods and the teams that I use and then I'll show you two battles in this one. So the first one will be four Mandalorians and Malak completing tier 7 to get the Mandalorian feat which will allow us to get max rewards this time. And then the second battle I will use a Padme team that will complete the remaining three feats. Uh, on tier 7. So if you just want to skip through the battles, uh, go ahead, there'll be YouTube chapters below as always, but otherwise, let's just have a look what's waiting for us in today's challenge. We are taken to the planet of Navarro and we are facing a squad of uh, Imperial Troopers. Now let's first have a look at the modifiers actually here. So the global modifier, so that's the modifier for the planet of Navarro, is Remnant Power. And whenever a character inflicts a debuff, they will gain a stack of Imperial Rule. And for each of those stacks, they will gain extra offense uh, and potency. And this is stacking, so the more debuffs you or enemy applies, uh, the higher the potency and the harder they will hit. Now the modifier that you get uh, is the code, so that's the Mandalorian modifier. And anytime they take damage, uh, all Mandalorians will get, gain a stack of Clan Loyalty. Now this also actually applies uh, if you have four Mandalorians and one non-Mandalorian character. So even though uh, in, for that first battle there we will not have a full Mandalorian squad, everybody will still be getting the Clan of Loyalty because we will just have one non-Mandalorian character. And the Clan Loyalty will add extra protection and counter chance and minus damage penalty when assisting. Well, the, the assisting bit, it won't really uh, matter so much, it's, it's more the counter chance and uh, that will really make a difference here. Okay, so the enemy modifier. Now even though these guys are Empire, they have their own specific Imperial Trooper modifier, they don't have the generic Empire modifier. And that is that at the start of uh, the battle, Imperial Troopers will gain one stack of endless ranks, so maximum three stacks. And what this stack will do, it will allow them to revive. Now this revive can't be prevented, think of it as a zombie, she keeps being revived as long as there is another Night Sister ally on the battlefield. So General Skywalker, Weapon Tech from Wad, um, you know, even Whirlwind from Ray. So any kind of attacks uh, that prevent normally would prevent revives will not prevent this. And for every time yeah, you defeat one, they will lose those stacks. So first you will need to take out three imp uh, Imperial Troopers, they, they lose all these stacks and then you'll be able to start taking them out. Now we are facing here, as you can see, Piet lead uh, with Death Trooper, Short Trooper, uh, Stark, uh, as well as Veers. Now Piet here, he's really uh, the biggest threat here. He will be very fast, he'll get his buffs and everything going. Uh, so, you know, he should be your priority to take out, but he will go into stealth. Uh, so, you know, you will have to first dance around and take out the other guys before you can uh, finish off Piet uh, in the end. Okay, so let's have a look at the feats next. So we got four feats as always. So one obviously you have to win the battle. Uh, and then the Mandalorian feat this time as mentioned is much better for us that don't have a good Mandalorian squad because it allows you to only use four Mandalorians and one extra character that does not need to be a Mandalorian to complete this feat. And then you've got the undersized feat and uh, without losing unit fit. So for the first battle here, uh, I'll do the Mandalorian squad feat here. Uh, which I'll use Mandalorians and Malak. So let me just uh, show you the team that I'll be using and their mods. All right, so this is kind of the Mandalorian team here put together. As you can see, they're not very, apart from Django, they're very, they're not really high gear and high level. Uh, so it doesn't really matter to be honest. They're there just for the feet. It's Malak that will be doing all the heavy lifting. Um, and I had to remote him because mine's only Relic 4, so he's not, you know, top Relic here. And I, you normally have him modded for speed and tenacity, uh, but this wasn't enough because he, they were able to take him out. So what I did was uh, I loaded him with defense 
uh, mods as well as protection, which brought his protection up to 160k for me, uh, and then his armor for 73%. So let's come on my Malak that he was able to survive all those hits from troopers. Okay, now let's go into the battle and let me talk you through it how this actually works. Okay, so now here Piet depends on the RNG what he will do first. Uh, now for my testing, if he uses his AoE, uh, it was less likely for me to win. Um, so if you're struggling, just keep an eye on, on this first move here. So for example here Piet, he actually uh, did not use his AoE as the first move, which is good because it allowed my, my guys to get a couple of hits in there <laughs> before they all died except Malak. Um, so I just wanted to point out here. Now the biggest threat here really before I continue with the battle actually as well is Death Trooper. Uh, because uh, um, whenever somebody's dazed with his basic he can stun, so his basic can apply daze. And as well AoE from Piet can apply daze. And for example when your Malak is dazed, uh, Death Trooper has a chance to stun him. Um, with his basic obviously that might as well you know a little bit ruin your run sometimes uh, as well as uh, his AoE can again apply healing immunity which will again prevent your Malak from healing up when he'll be taking all those hits um, so depending on you know your relic uh, Malak or your mods I had to run this like three four times that I got the RNG good that I was able to complete so don't get discouraged you know if, if your Malak you know doesn't immediately win on the first go so really, you know, that's the one I want to, put, to point out. The Death Trooper is actually the only one that can really, really ruin uh, your run here. That's why I said it's better if Piet doesn't start off with his uh, AoE that can daze, because then uh, Death Trooper won't be able to immediately stun somebody whenever he uses his basic. Okay, so we have to go after Stark now or uh, Short Trooper. So just going after Star Gear. So there you go. I'm lo already losing my <laughs> low gear Mandalorians here. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be Malak that will be, you know, doing here all the damage. So there we go. We we got a first drain off. But remember, we have to do first three kills before we can actually take somebody out. So there you go. They revived now. Got two stacks left um, of the revive buff here. So just trying to take out Stark again. However, he lost Mark there. So had to hit short trooper there, dispel his taunt with Malak. Now luckily death mark won't do anything to Malak, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, here we go. So my Malak barely hanging in there. Now Veers is marked. Let's go ahead and take him out. Okay, so there you go. Uh, death trooper there uh, stunned my Malak. So that can sometimes ruin your chance. We got one stack of revives. There you go. We exhausted all the revives now, so we can actually finally start taking these guys out. Uh, so Veers, you know, he's very low, so I'm just trying to get him out. But now we got Mark over on Stark, and there we go. So this is where you know the slowly the stacks of clan loyalty really come into play uh, because your Malak will start counterattacking, so he can recover some, uh, you know, health on on uh, his basic when he counterattacks. Now they got stun on my Malak, so hopefully Death Trooper doesn't land a daze on him. Okay. Uh, sorry, they doesn't stun him yet. He did land a daze and a stun. So trying out to get Death Trooper out. There you go, another stun from Death Trooper. And there we go. Needed to take Death Trooper out before he gets his AoE again out that uh, might apply healing immunity because then that would really spoil the run. Now just going after Short Trooper here. He's got Mark on him. Okay, so as you can see, counter attacks helping here uh, Malak recovering health so he can stay in the battle and finish off what he started. Now there we go. So again, you know, what kind of Mandalorians you have here probably doesn't really matter. What matters is how high, high relic is your Malak and can you get him to survive the initial barrage and everything and how lucky you get with those uh, stuns and everything that you resist the stuns okay my Malak did get stunned I think like about three times in this round but he was still able to hang in there and there we go complete here on tier 7 uh, so we, we will be able to get max rewards uh, after uh, completing the remaining three feats Alright, so now for the second battle in this video, which will complete the remaining three feats here, 
Um, I'll just be using Padme here with Ahsoka, Anakin and Kenobi, so you're, you're really like a core Padme team here. Now there are probably other teams that can do this, like you know, General Skywalker, Rebels, there's probably a lot of there, Jedi. Uh, I just thought that Padme could be good here, uh, quick and easy I think because of her unique, so obviously whenever uh, the guys will attack out of turn and you know troopers are all about attacking out of turn, assisting, counter-attacking and things like that. Um, you know, you'll be stacking uh, protection up uh, and then obviously um, as well Padme can heal, apply protection up as well from her other abilities which will then build up courage and eventually you'll stack so much courage that you'll just be able to quickly take, th take those guys out without any issues. So my Padme here, Artrelic 4, modded for health, so she's over 90k health. And I got Ahsoka here now, because she's Relic 4, normally I have her modded for critical damage. However, because, you know, she was quite squishy uh, and sometimes, you know, she wasn't able to survive all the AoEs, uh, I decided to change her mods to like a max health set. So at the moment, uh, she's got like 74k health. And this was enough, because remember, protection up is based on your health. Uh, so this was enough that she was able to survive every all the attacks. Got uh, Relic 7 Anakin here and having modded for offense. And finally, Relic 7 can all be modded for health and defense. So I got over 100k health on him. So hopefully he'll be tanky enough to be able to survive all those attacks thanks to the protection up. Alright, here we go. Now, obviously, Piet will be very fast. So he will get his first attack out. Um, just want to then cleanse that off. Uh, get protection up going, so you start building up courage. And obviously the only here threat here is kind of Death Trooper because his AoE can dispel and he dispels all this protection up that you have. You know, you'll lose, you won't be able to stack courage that quickly. But after he wastes, there you go, his AoE initially then um, once you again build up uh, stacks of courage, protection up and everything, you should be able to finish off this rather quickly. But again, you know, have to burn through these guys three times so that they lo lose the revive stacks so we can actually then start taking them out for good. So they got two stacks to go, one stack of revives, and there you go. All the stacks of revives now exhausted. So now when we actually take somebody out, they will stay down. There we go, my Kenobi barely hanging in there for now. But anyway, luckily Padme with a heal and lots of protection up here. So we should be able to quickly take these guys out thanks to all the courage that we stacked. Kick in the face, Piet is gone. Basic over down Death Trooper, he gone. And there we go, there's Ghost Stark as well. It's a very quick and easy win here with Padme. As mentioned before, there may have plenty of other teams that can do this. Um, I just found this team to be the easiest and quickest to just in one go you know, very quickly to complete the remaining feats so you don't have to do this multiple times with multiple teams for various feats. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this uh, Galactic Challenge video today. We'll see uh, in the month of March if this trend of, you know, needing specific characters that are quite rare and more difficult to obtain will continue or will see you revert back to the initial where, you know, it was quite easy to get max rewards every time. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this video that you find it useful and helpful let me know in the comments below or on my discord server but until then have fun enjoy your life and may the rng be with you my friends